This is video number six in working with Google Test. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use the on-call and expect call macros in the Google Mock Library. We assume you already have your projects all set up, and uh, which we talked about in the previous uh, videos. In this one, we'll uh, see how we add our first on-call macro. We'll be adding some expect call macros, and we'll see how you can continue to use expect and assert uh, macros to, to do your actual testing, and we'll look at a full example. Let's first talk about the on-call macro. This macro helps you set behavior in a default manner for the mock. Remember, a mock doesn't really do anything, and the default behaviors are to pass back zero for um, everything that passes back an int or a pointer, and to pass back false for booleans. But we want something more than that a lot of times when we're running our test. So we need to set up a default behavior for the objects and the methods that we have. This is different than expect call. The expect call macro is used to set what the expectations are when that method is called. So it's more like uh, expect or an assert. So you'll, you'll see some examples of this and it'll make sense. So in the on call, it has a, here, here's how it's all set up. You say on call, you give the mock object, you give the method, and then you pass in the number of arguments and the values of those arguments that you're going to try and match. And those are called matchers. And I can have uh, several sets of matchers. I can uh, specify it in the method, and I can also specify multiple matchers over and over again with the, with the dot with uh, method call. And then I set what the default behavior is um, with the will by default perform some kind of behavior, either return a value, set a, a variable or whatever I want it to do. Let's take a look, a real quick look at matchers. Matchers allow me to base behavior on my on-call macro and my expect call macros um, to match specific parameters that are being passed into the method. The most important one, the one I use a lot, is the match anything, which is an underscore. So I can just say uh, specify underscore in, in my matcher call. I can also match against a specific type or specific values, as you can see with the comparators and even string matchers that they have in here. To really understand this, let's take a look. So I've already extended our example that we had before. I've added another test here, which in our previous test we were testing for. Um, uh, no account in our Bitcoin thing. And this, this time we're actually going to specify um, an account and we want it to actually do something this time. So what I specify in my Bitcoin bank, I've looked in my code and I know that when I call update local balance, it's going to change the balance in my Bitcoin bank. So it's going to call change balance. So in this case, when I call change balance, I want it to return 100. Now, I'm really not going to call a Bitcoin bank. Remember, I mocked that up. But I want it to pretend like it did, and I want it to return 100. So that's exactly what it does here. It goes ahead and returns 100. So when I call update local balance, I get a success because everything's set up properly. And then when I go and get the local balance, I should see a balance of 100. Let's go ahead and run this test. So I go ahead and run the test. And again, remember that mocks don't really do anything. And one of the benefits of these macros is that I can set up default behavior for that mock object right here in the test. That gives me high cohesion and loose coupling with other files. To run this test, I only have to define everything right here in the test itself. It's actually a very good pattern to follow when writing your test. As you can see, it passed. Everything ran through fine. Now, I could, um, I could check and make sure that this was doing something different. And this time, I'm going to force a failure by saying that the default behavior when I call change balance with the string in the first argument as my account will return 50. So I'll go ahead and save that. And I will run this again. And you will see that we will get a failure this time. This is kind of a proof that, yeah, it really did do what I thought it to do. 
and there we go. It said it failed. Now, if I look down here, I can see why it failed. And look, it was expecting a value of 100, but it returned 50. That's exactly what we thought it would do. Let's change this back to 100 so we know that it works. Now, that's on call. So I can change the behavior of any method in the mocked up object that I'm using. Um, return is, is probably the most uh, used one that people use, but there's several other actions that we can talk about in, in another video. So let's take a look at the expect call macro. This macro is used to set um, what the expectations of a mock, mock method would be. So it takes the mock object, the method and the matcher, just like on call, and then I can specify how many times we expect that method would be called. And then I can also specify each time that it's called what action it, it was supposed to perform. If it doesn't perform that action, then I get an error, right? So the times tells me how many times I expect it to be called. This is pretty useful if you want to um, see if you have your code is maybe calling a method more times than you want. This is a good way to put a stop in there um, to prevent people from calling something multiple times, like um, changing uh, your account balance. You probably only want that to happen once every time you call update, update account. So the will once macro lets you specify what actions you're, uh, you, you believe that that method is going to return. Right. In this case, down here in the simple example, it says that the object turtle, when I call get y, will return once 100, and then it will return 200, and then from then on it will return 300 from then on. So this gives me a way of checking behavior in, in um, inside the code without instrumenting the code in any way. Let's take a look and see how we can augment our example here with the expect call macro. So in this case, I'm going to specify expect call to change the balance. I'm going to specify explicitly when it says my account is passed in. And I don't care what the second argument is. It happens to be a balance number, but I'm going to say I don't care. And is it going to be called once? And is it going to return 100? Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So while this is running, this is really good when I'm trying to make sure that maybe update local balance hasn't been changed to call change balance multiple times. Look at there, it passed. Now let's force this to, um, to fail this time by maybe specifying in my test here to actually call update local balance twice. And let's see what happens when uh, when change balance gets called the second time. Like I said, this is a great little tool um, to check to make sure that we're not um, being a little overzealous with some of our method calls outside of our class. Look at there, I got a failure. And the failure is very unique to Google uh, Mock. It says it returns a uh, it, it said here it returned um, 100, what it expected, but it expected to be called once, and it was actually called twice. It says oversaturated or active. So let's say that I do want to call it twice. I can chain the will once commands here by saying will once again, and then return 100. And I can chain these as many times as I want. Or I can use that will repeatedly um, and then return 100. Then I can call it as many times as I want. It's more open-ended. Then you won't catch maybe uh, erroneous race conditions and, and things like that that you may want to look for. Let's go ahead and run this. I'll run just the failed test this time. And you'll see that it picks up both change balances this time. So. That's the on-call and expect macros. Again, on-call sets up what default behavior is, and expect call um, is a way of checking that the behavior is running the way that you expect. 
it's really useful for diving down into uh, protecting yourself from making really bogus calls to to um, classes outside of the class that you're testing. And uh, it gives you some insight as you're running these tests into what's going on. If you have any additional questions on this stuff, take a look at our next video. We're going to talk about how to use these and architect a really good um, system of tests uh, so that we can reuse some of these tests and these concepts um, can be expanded upon.